Golly, that's good. I cracked myself up. I still haven't found my first Blanton's. <laughs> that's different. I really like that. They're like together, like peas and carrots. That's funny. Sometimes accidents are good things. Peshods or pechods or pecha. <laughs> this is not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs>How's it going? It is time for another Burb Cast, and uh, we're doing the Town Branch tonight, the Bourbon and the Rye. Um, these are some that I've had. Hey, Paul's watching. How you doing, Paul? I know you've been uh, a little bit uh, under the weather again, uh, or at least part of you has been. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so these two were released in May, May of 2023. Together, there was actually a third one. Uh, they brought out the um, single malt as well, and I'll just, I'll just get you up to date. I'll get you. So um, they released the exclusive single barrel selection of the malt whiskey, the rye, and the bourbon. The Town Branch malt single barrel priced at seventy bucks, sixty nine ninety nine uh, plus tax. Town Branch rye single barrel, uh, fifty four ninety nine, and Town Branch bourbon single barrel. That was. That's glass. That's real glass. Uh, priced at $45.99. I did not buy the single malt. There were 15 barrels that OHLQ chose for their big release. There we go. Um, exclusively for Ohio. So while you can get Town Branch other places, this particular pour, these particular pours, are Ohio only. Uh, and, and Ohio does that. They, they do it exclusively for Ohio. But see, one of the things about Ohio is that they don't allow liquor stores and bars to do their own picks. Now, private groups can do it, but bars and restaurants can't. So that's something that other states have. Like, for instance, Michigan, they can do, they can do store picks all they want. Ohio can't do that. OHLQ, Ohio Liquor, does the picks, and then they... They put it out for all of the liquor stores. And I guess, I don't know if they're going after consistency or go... It, for me, I think they could probably do both, right? Let the stores have a pick. Why not? Uh, let's see. Uh, bottled a barrel proof without blending. Single barrel selections retain distinctive flavors and features imparted by the barrel in which they were aged. Each of these selections distilled at Town Branch and their double pot stills and aging used... Uh, using their signature aging process, which makes use of the barrel's entire lifespan. I didn't look into that. I should have looked into that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that uh, that uh, unusual signal signature aging process. I don't. I don't know what that is. Sorry. <laughs> you can look it up. <laughs> um, Town Branch Master Distiller Mark Kaufman even hosted three bottle signings. That week in Ohio, probably in the biggest markets. They don't, they don't go to little markets with that kind of stuff. Company is Lexington Distilling or Lexington Brewing and Distilling Company. The name Town Branch is named after the limestone waterway, Elkhorn Creek, that runs through Lexington. The town was built on this branch of water to provide power and also to provide filtered limestone water for distilling. In other words, it was the perfect spot. As a matter of fact, it's said to be right in the center of the bluegrass state. And there was even at one time a map on the front of these bottles that kind of showed uh, where it was in Kentucky. They don't seem to have those on these bottles, and I didn't see that they still have them. Uh, that was an older review where I saw the map on the front, and they talked about it. Kind of interesting. Uh, Town Branch is the new, first new distillery built in Lexington since Prohibition. Opened in 2012. They have a second location in Pikesville called Alltech Dueling Barrels Brewery and Distillery. Uh, the bourbon that we're going to try first. I did get the bourbon, right? Yeah, they did this backwards. Normally rye is green and bourbon is, is orange or whatever color that is. And they did it backwards this time. So for some reason they made the bourbon green. And it's just throwing me off. <laughs> the bourbon is 105 proof. Uh, the mash bill is 72% corn, 15% malted barley, 13% rye. The barrel was filled October... 3rd, 2016. So October 3rd, 2016. That would make it 
what, a seven year? Okay. Let's get into it. Oh, well, spicy. That's surprisingly, it's only, um, it's only 13% rye. Smells spicy. Quite spicy. It's got an astringency to it. Okay. There's some honey on there, which, you know, I like that. It's, it's one of those you don't want to stick your nose down in it because it'll come back and punch you in the face. Cinnamon. Uh, somewhere in between that baking cinnamon and that red hot candy cinnamon. Somewhere in between. It's a nice cinnamon. A little vanilla on it. I'm not finding any caramel. Caramel. If you have a degree. There is a fruit note on it. That's a tough one. Possibly raisins. It's definitely not citrusy. Raisins, dates, they're so close. Uh, dates being a little bit on the sweeter side than raisins. I can see myself going towards dates instead of raisins because there is just a sweetness to it, but it's not, it's, it, it's, it's more spicy than sweet. Yeah, I'm surprised those rye notes, I'm surprised there's only 13% rye in this because it's, it's presenting itself as definitely uh, a bit spicier than that. Some black pepper on it. All right. We're going to do both of these tonight, so I'm going to get right into it. There it finally hit. That was a slow bloom. Once it hit, though, it hit in the back of the throat. Um, and now it's getting the tongue. Now that it's swallowed, it's getting all over the everything else. And it's actually it's actually decent. It's got a nice mouthfeel. Um, it's not thin. Got 105 proof and uh, <laughs> seven years in the barrel. And barrel proof, it better not feel thin. And it doesn't. It doesn't. All right. I bit my cheek earlier today. And I mean, I bit it. And so it's hard to do this because I'm feeling, I'm <laughs> feeling <laughs> going into the, ow. <laughs> All right. It has an interesting flavor to it. Like it's trying to do black cherry. This is what I'm getting on the finish. Like it's trying to do black cherry, but it comes off like a throat lozenge. Not bad, just a little bit, but that's what I'm catching. Let's give it another shot here. Okay, still getting some honey on the palate. Um, I am getting a little salted caramel. Caramel if you don't have a degree. <laughs> see how I twisted it around, see what I did there? Um, some nice cinnamons there. Not the red hot cinnamon, but a, a, more like a baking cinnamon. <clears throat> um, I'm not gonna tell you it's a remarkable pour, but it isn't bad. Now the finish is beginning, and now I'm getting that throat lozenge taste again. Um, it's not terrible. It's only a little bit. It's, it's, it's not like it's, it's, it's it, you know, it's okay. That, the, 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 the palate is definitely better than the finish. The nose is better than the palate, but only marginally. Yeah, that, that finish is quite medicine-y to me. And the more it sits, the more medicine-y it gets to me. <clears throat> All right, one more of these, and uh, then we'll, we'll do some water. I 
actually got a little graham cracker that time, which fits in with the cinnamon. <coughs> it's not bad. I don't, I don't care for the finish, but it's not bad. Okay, we're going to do water. Oh, <laughs> that's the rye. Silly me. We're doing bourbon. All right. Now, I'm going to do like I've been doing and just do a few drops. That's enough. I've been doing like a full milliliter, and I'm noticing that I don't need to do that much. So you can learn along with me here. It doesn't take much to open it up. <clears throat> now, I don't know if I'm going to like this one opened up or tight. These are both um, neck pores, right? I haven't let them breathe. I didn't pour them out and pour them back in today like I do a lot of them. I do some of them. Not all of them. Excuse me. All right. Let that get out. <laughs> all right. It proofed it down, didn't really change anything else. Nope, water didn't do a darn thing to it. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> how about, how about, how about? I add a little more water to it. Because if three drops isn't enough to do something to it, maybe a few more drops will do it. There, there's a, <clears throat> there's about six drops. Let's see if that does anything to it. Brought some of the bloom back. I don't, I don't know that it did anything. I, I'm not, it opened it up some, there's more flavor, but I don't think it changed it any. And it didn't really open it up a lot. It's just kind of what it, what it was <clears throat> with maybe just a little more. Not much. All right. All right, I've only got one ice sphere with me tonight. So I'm going to choose the one that I like the best, and I'm going to put that one on ice. So somebody I had read online said they liked the rye better, so I am looking forward to that, because a lot of times I like the rye better. Um, with the 1776, I like the rye better. I think the Mayor Pingree, chicken cock, um... Oh, there's a, there's a list. There's a few. Um, what's another one? I can't think of any of the other ones, but I, I generally tend to like the rice better when I have that matchup. Uh, there was one in particular. Oh, the Fry, Ran uh, Fry Ranch. Fry Ranch, I like the rye better than the bourbon. Myself. All right, so this is the rye. The rye is a hundred and. 8.6 proof, uh, 3.6 proof points higher than the bourbon. The mash bill, this is a low rye when you consider rye percentages, right? It has to be 51% to be a legal rye. Otherwise, it isn't. <laughs> this is barely over that. This is 55% rye, 30% corn, 15% malted barley. Now, the malted barley is supposed to give you a couple different things. It'll give you a nutty sense. It also can give you a fruity sense. Um, so we'll see what it does with the rye. 55% uh, rye, if you're not a rye lover, you might like Thai bran uh, Town Branch because the bourbon only has 13%, and this is a low rye, rye with 55%. So let's see which one I like better. Huh? <laughs> I didn't bring anything down to clean my palate with, so oh well. Okay, that smells really earthy. That doesn't have some of the notes that I like. It doesn't have that sweetness. Um, now, again, I'm just coming off of the bourbon, so I'm going to try to be patient with this. So far, the rye, it 
okay. But let's, uh, we'll get back to it. We'll get back. We'll get back. Whew. That's rather astringent as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely some cereal notes on this. Generally not one of my favorite notes when it comes to rice. Um, there's, a, there's a nice strong cinnamon there. That astringency is just 108.6, so this may be a warm one. Whew. Don't stick your nose in the glass, Casey. Come on. There's a fruit. I can't tell you what it is. That's that's the thing about going from one to another. I I, I do have some deficits when it comes to that. Um, get me into one, I do, I do well, but you, you make me do more than one. You didn't make me. It's not your fault. It's my fault. Take full responsibility for this. The, I will tell you the nose for the rye is much more timid than the rose, the nose for the bourbon. The bourbon nose was very present. This is not. Um, it's, it's kind of subdued. I mean, you got to go looking for it. Then you stick your nose in the glass and the next thing you know, you got... Ethanol up your nose. I mean, this one I feel like I gotta stay arm's length, but it's not, it's not giving me much. There's some. All right. Very interesting. 108.6 proof, and it has a slower bloom than the bourbon. It hasn't fully even expressed itself yet. It's starting to get a little on the tongue now. Oh, I'm feeling it going down. <laughs> I feel that. Whew. It's definitely coating the tongue nicely. Another nice mouthfeel. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with the way this feels in the mouth. Uh, it's just, it's the bourbon, the flavors just didn't, I didn't, they were okay. The finish I didn't like. This one, the rye, I'm not getting any bad finish notes at all. But I can't tell you that I got a lot out of that pour. I mean, I was telling you the nose is a little timid. I think that palate may be a little timid too. Uh, doesn't seem to be a lot happening, but I've had my first sip now of the rye. So we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, and, and Bill is with. Hey, welcome. Welcome, sir. I hope you're having a fantastic evening. <clears throat> I realized just before the bird cast um, that it is no longer cool outside. In Ohio, we've been, it's been great. We've been, just in the last few days, it's been 65, 70 degrees. It's been wonderful. Today we got up to 90, I think. And uh, I'm sitting here and I realized that, that I didn't turn on the air conditioner today. I've had the windows open every day this this week. It's been wonderful. Um, and <laughs> today I need the air conditioner and it's not on. So I'm maybe a little shiny. <laughs> All right, let's get back into this. Interestingly, it, it has like maybe half the flavor of the bourbon, but I like it better. It's very unassuming. It's very smooth. Um, compared to the bourbon, it's just, it doesn't feel like 108.6 proof. It doesn't. It, 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 until, until you get into the finish and those notes come back and you start to feel that bloom a little bit, that's when it hits you. This has got a very long finish, this rye does. The bourbon does too, but the rye in particular does have a very long finish. And it's a pleasant finish. It doesn't have a ton of notes, but, but it's pleasant at the same time. It's not like you're pulling out one thing or the other. It's a little bit drying on the palate. 
So if you're looking for one of those, if you like those ones that like pull moisture out of your mouth, just a little bit, not bad. Uh, not bad at all. As a matter of fact, it was hardly noticeable. But now I'm starting to feel a little bit of the numbness in, right up here. And it's a little bit dry just on the inside. Not bad. Uh, it's nothing that would keep me from wanting to drink this. I will tell you, I'm really curious about what this is going to be like in a month. If I, if I leave it sit and I don't touch it anymore, what it's going to be like. Because this one is so sedate as far as flavor and nose um, that I'm just wondering if it will open up. And we're going to find out in a minute when we... Well, let's do it now. Let's just, let's just add a little bit of water to it. I'm going to go back to that customary three drops. See if that's enough. It wasn't enough with the bourbon because the bourbon just didn't do anything. Quinn's watching. Hey, Quinn. Welcome, sir. We're doing the town branch. This is that OHLQ pick from last year. And um, I, I, I know there were a lot of people that didn't like it. I'm not going to tell you don't like it. I'm going to tell you it's underwhelming. At least the bourbon is. The rye I like better, and it doesn't have as much flavor as the bourbon. Now, why is that? I like its smoothness. I like the way it feels in my mouth. Um, and I like the fact that it's not giving me, like, cough drops for the, for the finish. Uh, whereas the bourbon kind of gave me black cherry cough drops. Not overwhelmingly black cherry cough drops, but it was there. Would that be one that I would want to mix? Probably. At 105 proof for the bourbon, that, I mean, that would be a great mixer. Gives you the bourbon flavors that you want, and then you'll have your simple syrups and your bitters and whatever else you want to add to it. That Town Branch bourbon could be perfect for it. It's a little pricey to do that. Uh, I like doing that with you know cheaper bourbons and rice. Um, but since this isn't a, this isn't a, a, a exemplary pour... Might be good in a cocktail. Put it in a Sazerac or something. I had one of those just recently, another Sazerac. Oh my gosh, it's a good drink. If it's, if it's made well, oh, it's such a good drink. It starts off with a little absinthe and you, you, you swish it around the glass and pour it out. Or use a, like a, a, a mint. Never mind, never mind. Do that another day. We've already done it once. We'll do it another day. All right, so this is a little bit of water with that rye. Mm-hmm. That woke it up. That's nice. Okay. So once again, the mash bill on this, 55% rye, it's a low rye, 30% corn, 15% malted barley. The lower amount of the corn and the higher amount of malted barley is giving me some very nice floral and fruit notes on this. Um, that I didn't get until I opened it up with water. That tells me this is going to be a very, very nice bottle uh, after it opens up a little bit. Let me get back into that. That was nice. That was unexpected. It was actually quite good. And now I know I like this one better. <laughs> All right. Mmm. Okay, this is interesting. <clears throat> so this is a 55% rye. This is a 13% rye. The bourbon has more rye notes to me than the rye. It's spicier, it smells spicier, whereas the rye, the 55% rye, tends to be a little bit more sedate, like I said. It doesn't have those strong cereal or spicy rye notes because it's offset by that 30% corn and 15% malted barley. Um, if you don't like rye and you want to try rye, this one might actually be a pretty decent one for you. This is not bad. I, once you add a little water to it, the flavor just comes out. And, um, one more time, I got to get you some notes. I got to tell you what I'm tasting because there's definitely something either floral or fruity and I haven't really picked it out yet. So let me see what I can do. That's a tough one. I'm going to go back to the black cherry. I think it's black cherry. It's, and it's not like a lozenge. It's like tasty black cherries. The type that you want to eat. Not the type that you eat because you have a sore throat. <laughs> it 
that fake black cherry ick that the ugh, the lodge ugh, ugh. no this is actually quite good of the two once again for me the rye has win won the day so because the rye has won the day that's the one that's going to see the ice I have a single gorgeous ice sphere because I only had one in the thing. I, I made the, I used the other one, uh, what, whenever I did the last one with ice. It was, I don't think I did ice last week because it was upstairs. So, all right. Mm. All right. Finger stir, Paul. So earlier today, I ate a banana pepper. And it was really mild. It was a nice banana pepper. Straight out of my friend's garden. But I ate it like you would an apple. I just picked up the <laughs> banana pepper and <laughs> crunched into it. I got about halfway through and then I started to realize, hmm, that's kind of hot. And then I get to the end, it's like, that's definitely hot. So I'm glad I did it early in the day. I did it like 5 o'clock. And this is at 7, so it gave me a couple of hours to get something else to eat and cleanse that. But boy, it was I was worried. I was worried I was going to mess up the burb cast because of it. But I did not. All right. Mm. Mm. -mm. Let me give it another chance. Okay, that was a little better. That first one tasted like mud. <laughs> that's a terrible note. I'm <laughs> sorry. But that's what it tastes like. It tastes like mud. That was a little bit better. I've only got like a little bit left. We're going to try this last one here. No. No, don't don't put that on ice. Now I got to try this one. It's it's going to be the same ice, but hopefully it won't be overly tainted. Okay, I don't like the glass, because you can't tell that it's on there. Although, it's kind of nice. It's unusual. It's new. Um, the, like the, I understand the 80 or 90 uh, proof town branch has got like wood and cork for the tops. At least they did at one point. Um, these are glass that are new and different and interesting, but without my glasses on, I can't tell that they're on there. Finger stir. All right. Let's see if this is any better. Let's try the finish. Okay. So the bourbon on ice is better than the rye on ice. Uh, the bourbon calms down. I'm not getting that black cherry finish like the lozenge like I did before. It's better. It's better. So there you have it. There is the tasting of the town branch from OHLQ from last year. It's not stellar. It's not horrible, but it's not stellar. Uh, the rye, to me, is definitely better uh, than the bourbon, and it's definitely better with a little water in it. The bourbon didn't seem to grow at all after putting some water on it at all. Uh, ice wasn't really the friend of either one of them. Um, neat, the bourbon had more flavor, but a bad finish. Uh, neat, the rye was more pleasant to drink, but didn't have as much flavor. So it's an interesting combination. Uh, both of them are single barrels. Both of them are barrel proof. They come from Town Branch in Lexington, Kentucky. All right. So now, what are we doing next week? Well, a couple of weeks ago, we're, we're in random 
territory here. This is September. We've been doing a lot of um, features and things like that, a lot of series. Uh, we did barrel proof series for two months, uh, but we're, we're just going rando <laughs> here this month. And we did a couple of weeks ago, we did the uh, Jeffersons and we did the Pritchard Hill Cabernet cask. Now I had remembered loving that, that drink. And now I had had it and then I tried it next to another Jefferson's and the Jefferson's that I tried just was really buttery. It tastes like butter. It's really good. But I remember really enjoying that Pritchard Hill cask, Cabernet cask from Jefferson's. And then we tested it again a couple of weeks ago and I don't like it anymore. And I, it's terrible because I was telling retail customers, yeah, guys, get it, get it. It's really good. It's really good. No, it isn't. <laughs> Not to me. Not to me. There are so many better wine casks out there. Cabernet casks out there. There's one in Columbus from um, from uh, High Bank, Whiskey War. Their Cabernet cask is really, really good. The Jefferson's wasn't. That being said, we're going back to Jefferson's next week. We're going to do this one, the Twin Oak. Um, now, I have not had the Twin Oak myself. Uh, I sold a lot of it, and I did have it mm, back in May, or I had it in June. I had it in June, but was it was in a smoked old-fashioned at the Renaissance in Tiffin, Ohio, uh, which was actually pretty nice. I like that place. Um, so that's where I had it, but it was in a drink. I didn't have it by itself. So we're going to try it. On its own, next week, this is the, this is the uh, Jefferson's Reserve Twin Oak Custom Barrel. I have something on my shirt. Why didn't you tell me I had something on my shirt? Thanks a lot. It's like walking around with your fly down. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, so the Twin Oak from Jefferson's Reserve... Uh, I will tell you, uh, there's some interesting things that they do with this um, involving the oak staves that are inside the barrel. It's kind of interesting. I'll tell you about it next week right here on Beautiful Bourbon. Uh, sometimes we're on Instagram, but not very often because it's boring. Uh, you can check us out, of course, you're on uh, Facebook now. Thank you for that, by the way. And uh, we will be on YouTube later on. So, hey, have yourself a fantastic week. We will see you next week with the Jefferson's Twin Oak. You take care. Thank you.